Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories, wise tales from storytellers around the world, which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended from ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello, Super Great Kids. How are you doing? I spoke to Super Great Kids fans Una and her brother Finn from New York City this week and they were very excited to go out and play in some freshly fallen snow. I wonder if you've been having some snowy weather. Now, the story in this episode is from Russia and it's got lots of frost and snow and ice in it. Did you know in many cities in northern Russia they pour water over their town squares in winter and they turn them into gigantic ice rinks to skate on? And the people there make huge homemade ice slides, which is a bit scary for the grown-ups, but are very exciting for the children. Can you think of things you like to do in the snow while we have a quick word with the grown-ups? Hello, super great kids. I'm back. Did you think of some good things to do in the snow? Maybe sledging or tobogganing? Making snow angels or snow animals? Or listening to stories while you watch the snow falling from inside your snug, warm house? So, stamp the snow off your boots and snuggle down to listen to this sparkling fairy tale from Russia, all about a little girl called Marusha and Father Frost. Are you ready? Here's Emily Hennessy. Little pigeons, come on in. Oh, it's a dark, cold night. Come and sit by the fire. Oh, have some warm tea. Get yourselves settled and cosy, little pigeons, because I have a story to share with you. Long, long ago, at the edge of the forest, there was a little wooden house. Here lived a man and a woman. They loved each other, but they were sad because they had no children. Every day, the woman went deep into the forest, and here there was a clearing, and in this clearing was an ancient oak tree, with a strong, winding trunk and branches like old, gentle, gnarled arms. This tree was so old, they say that it had been there, when the wolves would dance and the bears would sing. The woman would make an offering to the tree, maybe some crumbs for the birds to eat or a few drops of wine to pour onto the roots. But one day, she came with nothing. But then she remembered the blue silk ribbon in her hair. Oak tree, oak tree, bring my little... Little babe to me. She untied the ribbon from her hair and tied it high up in the branches. In the dark, feel the light, bring my little babe to me. In the cold, feel the warmth, bring my little babe to me. A soft breeze made the ribbon flutter. And it wasn't long before something fluttered in the woman's tummy too. Her belly grew as round as the full winter moon and then a baby girl was born. They called her Marusha. They loved her so much. They were so happy. And baby Marusha, well, she was happiest when she was outside, looking up at the sky and the birds and the trees. Her mother and father would wrap her up in a fur coat and put her out in her little basket to sleep. And when they came to bring her in, she'd be covered in a blanket of frost that glittered like jewels and her cheeks would be warm and rosy red. But Marusha's mother grew sick. Every day she became weaker. And one day 
she died. It was just Marusha and her father now. They lived a quiet life. The years passed, and Marusha grew older. One day, Marusha's father came home with a new wife and her two daughters. Marusha was so excited, so happy. We're a proper big family again now. Marusha and her new sisters, they played together. They chased around the forest. They played hide and seek. They made tree houses. They played with the dolls. They whispered secrets and stories to each other. And at night, they all slept together, curled up in Marusha's little bed. They worked together too, fetching the water from the well and chopping the firewood and the doing the cleaning and the sewing. Marusha's stepmother cooked big, delicious stews and pancakes and bread and there was always an endless supply of sweet biscuits. Ah, oh, life was good. But as time passed, things slowly began to change. We don't want to play with you today, Marusha, said the stepsisters. They threw Marusha's doll out of the window. There's no space for you in the bed. You'll have to sleep on the floor. And you do the cleaning today, Marusha. You fetch the water. You chop the firewood. I'm tired, said Marusha's stepmother. Marusha, you do the cooking today. Every day, Marusha played a little less and worked a little more, until she was doing all the work. Work harder, work faster, said the stepmother. One day, she picked up a stick and beat Marusha. The stepsisters watched and laughed. What about Marusha's father, then? Well, he had eyes to see what was happening and ears to hear what was happening, but he didn't have the power to change what was happening. And so it went on. The years passed. Despite everything, Marusha blossomed like a lovely flower. And Marusha's stepsisters did not. Young men started to come to the house. Is Marusha here? they would ask. There was one, a handsome musician that Marusha had glimpsed a few times. He had kind eyes, she thought. But the stepmother always got to the door first. Oh, no, 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 she is too busy to see you. But why don't you come in and have tea and cake with my daughters instead? But the men would always politely decline. Marusha's stepmother realised that as long as Marusha was around, her daughters would never get any attention. One morning, Marusha came down early, like she always did, to fetch the water, to light the fires and to cook the porridge. But the water was fetched, the fires were lit, and the stepmother was in the kitchen flipping buckwheat pancakes. She had a smile on her face. Ah, Marusha, I have some wonderful news. I found you a husband. The stepsisters, hearing the news, came clattering down the stairs. Oh! Is he rich? Ah, uh, so rich, said the stepmother, that he owns the whole forest and beyond. You'll meet him tonight, Marusha, under that uh, ugly old oak tree. That evening, Marusha's father hitched the cart to the horse, and off they went, deep into the forest until they reached the clearing. There was the oak tree. Marusha kissed her father goodbye and climbed out. I'll wait here for you. It'll be dark soon. No, no, father, you go. I'll meet him alone. Just come and fetch me in the morning. Marusha's father sighed and headed home. Alone now, Marusha stood beneath the wide branches of the oak tree, outstretched like arms. The forest was silent. It grew darker and colder. She pulled her thin, tattered coat around herself and shivered. And then came a breeze, and something in the branch above her fluttered, a blue silk ribbon. In the dark, feel the light. She carefully pulled it down and tied it into her hair. Bring my little babe to me. In the cold, feel the warmth. Bring my little 
little babe to me. There was something warm and familiar about this ribbon. It was pitch black now. Marusha heard a sound in the faraway distance, the soft tinkling of bells, and then a voice. Are you warm, little maid? Are you warm? Marusha knew who this was. Quite warm, Father Frost. I'm quite warm. The air seemed to turn to ice now. She couldn't feel her fingers or toes. Now came the sound of branches snapping in the trees around her. Are you warm, little paws? Are you warm? I'm quite warm, Father Frost, quite warm. Marusha was so cold now it felt like even her bones were frozen. Twigs cracked close to her. She could barely move her lips. Are you warm, little pigeon? Are you warm? Quite warm, she managed to stutter. Quite warm, Father Frost. All of a sudden, the huge, bright, full moon burst out from behind the clouds and shone down on the forest. Standing before Marusha was Father Frost, smiling, handing her a thick fur coat and a necklace of jewels that glittered like frost. She took the coat and the jewels, and warm now, Marusha took Father Frost's outstretched hands, and in the moonlight, the two of them began to dance. The next morning, Marusha's father came to bring her home. I wish you could have seen the look on the stepmother's face when Marusha walked in. Oh, she turned as purple as a beetroot with rage. And the stepsisters pulled at Marusha's furs and jewels. How did you get these? We want furs and jewels like these too. Hmm, said the stepmother. Furs and jewels you shall have, my darlings. Tonight you'll go to the forest and in the morning you'll come home with even more riches. Don't you worry. So, that evening, Marusha's father hitched the cart to the horse once again, and this time took the stepsisters to the oak tree. The stepsisters didn't bother with their winter coats. Soon we'll have thick furs to keep us warm. I wonder, will there be one husband or two? Well, if there's one, he'll marry me, of course, because I'm the most beautiful. No, he'll marry me because I'm the most clever. No, he'll marry me because I've got the prettiest ears. He'll marry me because I've got the daintiest ankles. They began to fight, to push and shove and pull each other's hair. They didn't notice how dark it got. They didn't hear the sound of the bells in the distance or the snapping twigs. They didn't hear the voice that said, Are you warm, little maids? Are you warm? It got colder, much colder. The stepsisters were frozen. Your face is as blue as a blueberry. Well, your face is as purple as a turnip. You're a tooth chatterer. You're a bone clatterer. You're as numb as a rock. You're as dumb as a stone. Are you warm, little paws? Are you warm? Go away, whoever you are. We are waiting for our husbands. They slapped each other's faces, they knocked each other down to the ground, they rolled and they wrestled. Are you warm, little pigeons? Are you warm? But by now the sisters were so cold, they couldn't reply. Their lips and limbs had turned to ice. In the silence, snow began to fall across the forest. In the morning... It was the stepmother who drove the horse through the thick white snow, through the forest, to the clearing. Under the oak tree she found her daughters, completely frozen like ice statues, both snarling and still mid-fight. She screamed so loudly that it sent the wolves and the bears running to their lairs. They say that she then marched into the forest to find Father Frost and take her revenge, but whether or not she ever found him, no one knows. What we do know is that she never came back to the house.
and that Marusha and her father lived there happily, peacefully. One day, the young musician, the one with the kind eyes, came knocking, and this time it was Marusha who opened the door and invited him in. Well, it wasn't long before wedding bells were ringing. Marusha went back to the oak tree then, and returned that blue silk ribbon to the branches. And soon the house was full of little children. And if these children were ever naughty or rude or wanted to go into the forest after dark, Marusha would gather them around and tell them the story of Father Frost. And then they would always be good little pigeons. And as for Father Frost... Well, he's still out there. And it's not just the forest where he roams, but also villages and towns and cities too. So if you ever meet him, just remember to be polite. Very polite. And you might just be rewarded with a tale to tell. Thanks so much to storyteller Emily Hennessy for that tale. Ooh, it made me feel cold listening to it. Did you get goosebumps when poor Marusha was sitting alone with Father Frost in the forest? Now, do you think Father Frost is a good character or a bad character? Or does it sort of depend on how you treat him, whether he's good or bad? Oh, and here's another question. Do you think that oak tree somehow looked after Marusha? Trees are often a bit magical in fairy tales. Do you know, in some Cinderella stories, a tree plays the part of the fairy godmother and it drops down dresses and food for Cinderella when she needs them. Can you think of another story in Super Great Kids Stories with a tree in it which protected a young girl? That's right. Did you guess? The magic orange tree. More about Cinderella stories next week. Now, super great kids, it's time for me to dig deep into my bag of happies and say thank you to some more of you who've been sharing your brilliant pictures and messages. Thanks to Chelsea and her four children for sharing a new story with me, Bony Legs by Joanna Cole. And Dolores, who is five, drew a brilliant picture of Stick Woman. And thanks to her brother CJ, who is seven, who drew a marvellously scary beast from the story The Beast Who Wants a Feast. Thanks to five-year-old Lily in California, who mailed us a lovely story owl picture from our Super Great Kids Stories colouring book. Thanks, Lily. I love all the different colours you've used. Ooh! And five-year-old Hannah Sai from Albuquerque, New Mexico, has been busy colouring pictures from the Super Great Kids Story colouring book and has sent us some of her pictures too. Thanks so much, Hannah Sai. I love the way that you coloured the sea red and pink in The Fox and the Foolish Fishes. It adds to the feeling of the sea in that story being a dangerous place where sea serpents like to lurk. And thanks to all of you who've been sending us pictures from our colouring book. And hello to six-year-old Valentina. Thanks very much for sharing your picture of Bikku Bai and the coconut. I loved seeing Bikku Bai, who was left dangling below the coconuts that he was trying to pick. Very funny picture, Valentina. And Lily, who is six from London, sent in a very clever story map of Tianche and the yellow dress. Oh, thanks so much, Lily. I loved the way you put so much care and attention into recording that story on paper. And thanks to siblings Max and Lara, who shared their carefully drawn pictures of how the rainbow got into the sky, with the snake who was shaking the slithers of ice down to the children below, who were all saying thank you for the rain. Thanks so much for sharing those pictures. Lots more thank yous to come next week. And we couldn't finish without giving a really big thank you to all of our sponsors and subscribers. Thanks to Kofi donors Ginny and Lizzie in Hong Kong and Ayla and Mia. It's very kind of you all. If you'd like to support Super Great Kids on Apple, 
click subscribe in Apple Podcasts. Or with Patreon and Kofi, go to our website and click on the buttons. Thank you all. We really couldn't do this without your help. Teamwork makes the dream work. That's it for now. See you next week. This podcast was produced in London by Wardour Studios.